Okay. Hi, good afternoon. As promised, the Gainesh Kodak with Daybreak News. I am at the Ministry of Education and I have here with me uh, the Honorable Minister of Education, Priyamani Chan. And in light of transparency and moving forward, I'm here to ask the Minister questions that will make us aware of what they're doing, when they're doing it, and how does it affect Guyanese. Thank you for having me. Um, thank you for coming. Um, I, in coming up, I uh, realized you had a meeting, and I had a short interview with the president for the Guyana Teachers Union. You brackle them? Yes, you could say I brackle <laughs> them. Um, from his point of view, it's been fruitful, and he sees uh, the Teachers Union and the Ministry of Education moving forward on some things. Can you give me your take on that meeting and why you even called it in the first place? Why did I call the union? The union, the Ghana Teachers Union, is a very important stakeholder in the Ministry of Education and in the delivery of education. They look after the interests of teachers um, across the country. As you know, teachers are the backbone of our system. So um, we can't and we will not be doing anything without uh, 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 collaborating with to collaborate with us. I, I believe unions are good things. Um, unions do what I did in my life uh, outside of, of politics, which is represent people who can't represent themselves. And so they do a noble job. I don't think a union ministry relationship needs to be combative. I think it needs to be a relationship that ha where both sides enjoy healthy respect for the other and that you work together to make sure out of our teachers and that we make them into the best they can be so that's kind of the relationship we generally will consult and we commit to that um, all major decisions will be consulted on and we're facing a big one now which is how do we deal with delivering academic um, material learning um, teaching to students in the COVID-19 pandemic and I don't see how you could move forward in a decision like that without engaging the union. So the invitation was specific to engage and consult and hear the union's views on um, school reopening and the consequences and what they know from the ground from their teachers. Sometimes we hear things in the ministry from our offices that are not necessarily what's happening on the ground. It's always good to get another view. Um, and But it's important, not only good to get another view, it's important to hear from the Ghana Teachers Union on um, their perspective on what our plans are might be or what our possibilities and what our proposals might be as well as to um, share with them what we plan to do so that they could share that with their teachers too and their members okay so it was a discussion of sharing viewpoints and enabling specific, moving forward specific to, to moving forward the to the september to the um, christmas term yes what is your position on the reopening of schools? Well, my position is informed or has to be informed by um, the Ministry of Health's knowledge, both their medical knowledge, their statistical knowledge, their experience uh, in the various regions, because you know sometimes you don't hear the full story, um, as well as what has happened across the world with, with schools and how they've opened and how they've managed. and matching that to our realities in Guyana. So for example, a country like Denmark opened very successfully using something called the bubble method. You have 12 children alone in a classroom, they're appropriately distanced, they're masked up, their temperature is tested, they have hand washing facilities, um, and they opened very well. And they opened successfully and they were able to stay open. In Guyana, do we have a number of teachers that have only 12 children in a classroom? If we do, do we have adequate hand washing toilet facilities? If we do, do we have adequate numbers of masks? If we do, is there community spread that we need to shut down so nobody moves? So it's a, it's a, uh, several different things and layers that we have to look at. We have not made a decision as yet. That's the purpose for consulting. Um, our decision is going to be based purely on science and statistics and the biology and the trajectory of the disease in Guyana and what we have learned around the world when, when people are reopening. 
I think that has been uh, very edifying uh, for the viewers and Guyanese in general. Question, mm -hmm. uh, Minister. When is everybody getting their first 10,000 voucher? Mm. That is a commitment we made as a po political party on the campaign trail. As you know, the PPPC has always honored its commitments. It's one we intend to honor. You also know, though, that, that we're in a very tight spot economically. Now, now let me very, be very careful before the Ghanese critic runs out with the headline that Manny Chan says they can't afford it. There are several things regarding the voucher. That's a, we're, we're talking at the cabinet level about submissions for the budget. But the... $10,000 requires a distribution to people that sometimes could require a gathering or several gatherings and that is something we're trying to shut down right now. So again, that is not going to be a decision. Prior to now, the Ministry of Education alone made decisions in that regard because we could have arranged where we met parents, how we delivered. That cannot be a decision we make by ourselves. We would have to consult with health. Unless we we have means of getting the cash grant to parents without them in any way gathering, and how do we protect our offices and so so some of those are the issues we have to examine. Okay, so you but are I sticking to your very, commitment. Yes, I'm and it's just as how it rolled out right now. The commitment was to assist parents with the cash grant, and that commitment will be honored. How we do that is is. Okay, this is what's the thing. Um, a lot of people have been asking me one of the questions and directly related to that one, and I was trying to do um, figure it out. This cash grant is only given to kids who go to public, uh, uh, the government schools, and people are asking why everybody does not get it. Mm -hmm. And I used to say first that man, these people are rich, they got money, so what they need with this extra money. Well, me rich. And Paul goes to the business school, my son. Right. I could do with the ten thousand dollars. And I'm asking, is there any possibility in the future? Or do you see that on the horizon that every child right. since one of your mottos is no child left behind and that was that, that was, was not my motto, that was Minister Bash's Oh motto. Mr. Bak Bash <laughs> created okay. Well, and, and well, the Minister of Education. That was not his motto either. I think that was um it was a misnomer. It was copied from a US policy and I, I think that's how it, it came about. But we tried to change it. In fact, our policy, if you go back to uh, Google articles, you'll see we actually changed it. But to today's day it we're still implementing that program. Okay. So, um so is it a possibility any possibility in the horizon of every child. So every child, our view is that every child, including children in the private schools, um, belong to us. They are Guyanese children. They choose to be educated privately, not necessarily because their parents are wealthy, but because their parents believe that might be a better route for them. Um, Guyanese children, the private schools have helped our public system tremendously with space, so they've taken off. A lot of kids who, if they come back into the public school, might end up with overcrowding and so on. I see every student, whether private or public, as a student that we have to um, have as our paramount concern, their interest. And so it is not off the cards. It is something that was raised even the last time. Like I said, we're very new. I don't think we're a week old as yet. So some of these things are still being ironed out. Okay, beautiful. I these, these things are always budgetary um, considerations. You know, we've come into a really... Uh, heavily taxed and by that I mean broke country and so you'll have to reprioritize some some things that we thought we could you know do right since away. you brought it up mm -hmm. what is the state of affair with the ministry in what regard um, you know there have been a lot of audits going on at other ministries and finding numerous irregularities um, has this ministry been running at its most efficient um, staffing are they performing up to date is there anything that I would like to call thievery been happening here or you've discovered so far well, it's the same stuff I would be relying on to deliver my programs <laughs> um, I think there's been a little a bit of sloth that that and perhaps and I'm I'm getting the impression that there that may have come about because of lack of direction 
but we're dealing with professionals and we expect from the ministry's uh, working staff their very best because they're not going to be lacking any direction from in, in terms of policy um, so I, I am disappointed about a couple of things like we should have a learning channel that we could refer to immediately and uh, have programs up and running that our children can be engaged academically right now as they are home we don't have that we have a learning channel but its content is not attractive not even to me um, and it certainly is not structured in a way that is could engage our children if they are to stay home now when Bart Jagley, who was president at the time, launched the Learning Channel. The whole idea was so that we could learn differently, so that we could um, deliver education uh, more effectively in places that can't get traditional means and so on. And that vision wasn't realized, but we're here to realize it now. So it, it, the Learning Channel really is going to be this one of the our you main. We would like to deliver the fancy Zoom classes and Google classes that some of the private schools are using. Connectivity is an issue, so we're not going to stop, or we're not going to stop trying. But the main focus will be to deliver education through packages that um, students can use with instruction on the learning channel and various courses and so on. Not courses, lessons happening on the learning channel in a very structured way. So that's what we're working on now. So you have not fun from anything so far that because I know there are different projects in the ministry and so on there's nothing right. to suggest there there um you, you there not everything is to your likeness as to how it's being delivered but there's nothing in this ministry so far the ministry of education that would suggest any rounding is being done here um I do I haven't looked for okay it. okay but well, let me give no, you some more time we, it's we just really a, we're really Critic really, really focused on trying to. I mean, it sounds like an easy task, but we, we have 187,000 children about there and 10,000 teachers who uh, expect to have to turn out to school on September 7th. Whether that turnout is going to be physical or virtual is what we're struggling with. Um, if it is going to be virtual, then how do we make it meaningful and not just tick a box or we've done something? How do we make sure our kids are learning what they're supposed to be learning or even half of what they're supposed to be learning? So that's really been what we're focused on, we're focused on right now. And closing, Ms. Manichan, um, the previous administration, mm -hmm. when it came in, it seems that they were frozen in time somewhere around 1992. And then when they came back in 2015, they thought off and started with the same process. You were a Minister of Education before. You would have implemented programs to ensure it's a human it's a human thing. Not everything goes the way you plan. Have you learned anything from your past experience as Minister of Education and are gonna make changes in this tenure now to suggest well because persons who have not been given the time to carry out what they want, maybe pro you might have implemented programs and it did not go the way you want. Are you picking up where you left off? Or have you looked, have been looking on and realized the times have changed and you might do things differently now? Precisely what is very difficult. First of all, let's deal with the, the previous administration. The previous administration is a huge disappointment to all guidance. People who voted for them and people who did not vote for them. And so it would be good, I mean, I don't want to tell them what to do in their political party, but it would be good if they're reflective of that. They disappointed people. people they came in gave such high hopes and made themselves out to be ideal and they just did not deliver. Now, not delivering credit means that people didn't get the impact, people didn't feel the benefits of what kind of what they should have felt in the last five years. And when you have sectors like education, you see what happens. And very quickly you can spiral down and a lot of gains could be lost. And that's really unfortunate it's a different it's funny in five years much has changed including I mean we have COVID now so you can't deliver in the same way you were going to deliver before I am not if there is something I would change is being tolerant of some amount of sloth we can't afford that people are looking to us to 
deliver academically to their children and so there will be no space for sloth or prevarication or um, excuses and and so that will be a little bit different a, a lot different and your approach yes cool I want to thank you for your time minister um, I'm hoping this has been very informative to you guys the Guyanese critic for the break news